our, our chiplet theme. Thank you. That, that might be useful if you can hear me now with a, a mic. Uh, so I'm going to quickly go over uh, one aspect of this uh, chiplet uh, solution, which is about the protocol and, and thinking about breaking up part, uh, a chip into, into multiple components. Um, obviously, there's a lot of different uh, viewpoints on, on this uh, challenge. So I'm going to start with uh, the pressure and, and why this is happening. And Chiplet, I think a lot of you have all seen this, but I'll, I'll just kind of recap it really quickly. There's a need for specialization uh, for compute, specialized silicon. You're seeing, you know, in the old days, you might have one general purpose compute server that runs a bunch of different workloads. Um, now you see uh, data plane units in the, in the data center that have storage, security, and uh, networking offload functions built into them. Obviously, AI is, is everywhere, uh, as, as highlighted uh, at this conference this, this week. Um, so there's a need to build more specialized uh, silicon. At the same time, we're seeing a supply shortage of talent that's actually capable of building these really sophisticated devices. It's really hard to, to build the RTL, to validate, uh, and to produce a, a high quality piece of silicon. And there's just not enough talent in, in the industry. And then last but not least, design costs are going up every generation as we go to more advanced nodes. Uh, it's about a 50-50 split between hardware and software, and uh, really this chiplet is about addressing that, that hardware challenge of, of having a reusable component that, that can lower my design cost, get more specialized compute on the market. So the other thing we talk about is a chiplet uh, ecosystem and marketplace where we have a, a plug-and-play world. Um, and, and I just kind of want to highlight from, from ARM's view about, and, and specifically for this talk, about what we're focusing on first as, as we continue this journey. And, and we do see it as a journey. You know, today there's lots of chiplet designs on the market. Uh, lots of people are building chiplets, uh, but a lot of times that's a proprietary chiplet platform where they have to only own st the whole stack, they own the FI, the packaging. Um, and as Debendra showed earlier, is now UC we have UCI and, and other consortiums trying to make that, that simpler. So we're starting with a proprietary world and trying to move to this open chiplet marketplace. But to get to that marketplace is going to require a lot of things to happen, you know, business plans or, or business models that are going to work for multiple companies so, so it's a viable business. Obviously, the, the challenges of interoperability, qualification, uh, et cetera, is, is also a big one. You know, if you're, if you're talking chiplet, you, you no longer have, uh, you know, in the PCIe world, you have a plug and play conference where you go and plug in your card to different, different devices and et cetera. When you, when you bring that in inside a package, you, you no longer have that opportunity. So how do you deal with verification and validation of, of different chiplets from, from different vendors? So what we see from ARM is this initial driver is going to really be about uh, a, a few different companies coming together to build a chiplet platform. And to do that, we need a foundation of, of FI technology, packaging technology, and a way to communicate between the two devices. And it basically, it's a contract between a few different companies. And that'll be the starting point because it's easier to get moving faster with a smaller company rather than, than having you know, the, the entire industry adopt one way of doing it. So again, this is what, what we're focused on first and, and kind of what I'm going to highlight today. The other facet here is now, if you think about building a system, and I'm showing uh, an SOC package, so you can see the SOC, there's a chip inside that package, and the, you can see the, the connectivity coming out from a, a single package on the left side. And then on the right side is when you have your PCIe bus and a PCB board, and you can connect multiple of those SOCs together th through a PCB layer. And what we're talking about is this middle case, and, and there's two different viewpoints in the industry. One is I just have a PCIe device, it's working great, but I want to plug it closer to the compute, maybe to get higher bandwidth or lower power or, or, or tighter integration, to less board space, et cetera. So that's one view. I could take a PCIe device and bring it in. From the ARM perspective, we're coming at the uh, silicon build world where we have our on-chip bus and networks and, and, and customers are building uh, their, their specialized compute as a, as a monolithic piece of silicon. And they're coming to us and asking us, how do I break this up into multiple components? Uh, you know, how can I take my compute and putting in one chiplet and then connect I.O., connect memory, and, and build out their, their specialized platform? So from our viewpoint, our initial viewpoint is, is coming from this world of a monolithic design and breaking it up and, and making sure that our customers basically can just extend the on-chip bus to, to a multi-chip environment. So that's really going to be the focus for my uh, talk today is, is just talking about this, this on-chip bus. And if you're familiar with building uh, pieces of silicon and you're familiar with bus architecture a little bit, then you've probably heard of AMBA. AMBA's been around forever. Um, there's a number of different standards, uh, CHI, AXI, AHB, um, you know, APB, they all kind of have a different purpose and a different need. But the two main ones we hear a lot about is CHI and AXI. 
Um, and, and to build a, a bus standard, you need more than just a protocol spec that, that sits on, on the shelf. You need verification IP, uh, you need models, you need software, uh, you need a, a way of, of tuning and modeling the, the system. And then last but not least, you need composability. You need devices that, that, that agree to, to that standard uh, to, for interface and interoperability. So it's really about bringing the, the market together. And again, we're starting with this, this IP world to build a monolithic piece of silicon. And now we're trying to extend that to a multi-chip environment. So the protocol that we're focused on bringing to market, and, and this is in development, it will be a standard uh, that's on the shelf that anyone can use. Uh, AMBA is uh, an open standard, so anyone can pick it up and use it for their own purposes. It doesn't necessarily have to be tied to an ARM processor. Um, and one of the reasons why we picked CHI is the most evolved of our standards. Um, and really, when you think about multi-chip connectivity, you have to think about high speed and high bandwidth uh, initially, also being able to scale it down. Uh, this brings in things like crediting schemes, um, packetization. You, you need a sophisticated, you almost need a sophisticated network to connect multiple of these devices together. And CHI is a great uh, platform for, for being able to do that. Um, and it also is built in lockstep, so the way to think about this is we have CHI for the on-chip bus, now we're going to standardize a way to take that to multi-chip. So if we look at some of the use cases, um, we have a full suite of options. Again, we're thinking about breaking up a monolithic design into multiple components. There's different ways of doing that. The first way you could do it is I just want compute, and I just want to break up my compute into multiple die, connect everything together, and I want to run one operating system, and it, and it just works. So that's one use case, obviously. That's, that would be considered a fully coherent uh, SMP or symmetrical multiprocessing use case. The second one is, is going to be the initial driver for a lot of this of interoperability between two vendors. You know, a lot of customers have an accelerator, and they, they just want to plug into a compute, or they want to source an accelerator that looks really good for a particular need, and they want a way to plug it into to their compute complex or, or their SOC. Um, so in this case, it's more the traditional IO, DMA, between two worlds kind of uh, environment. Um, and, and so again, that, that's going to be a big one. So this could be IO expansion. Uh, it could be accelerator, like an AI device, networking device, crypto engine, uh, something like that that could be, extend, you know, again, extend the, the capabilities. And the reason why that's important is if you think about it, now customers can build a common platform and get to market for, for one product, and they can quickly expand their, their market opportunity with a, with a quick, quick integration of another chiplet. So, so that's a driver is to, to be able to scale out their portfolio uh, to address this need of specialized compute. Um, and then last but not least, you see the IO Hub type of design, just trying to convey that we have a lot of flexibility on, on the number of devices, the type of topologies. You know, you go mesh and rings and, and fully connected. So it supports a lot of different types of networks for, for chiplets. Um, the other thing that, that we're thinking about from an AMBA pers perspective is we're trying to, to standardize around an on-chip bus. Um, this on-chip bus, um, you know, again, is taking that, that on-chip network and connecting to the external world. We're focused on standardizing that, that on-chip interface, uh, standardizing the packetization, and then plugging into industry standards such as UCIE uh, or other, other standards or other third-party uh, integration options to provide that flexibility. So ARM's focused on standardizing the green part. We're, we're working with the industry or leveraging the industry to provide the blue box. Um, and this is a good segue, uh, Debendra showed this slide earlier, uh, and I'll bring it up again just to kind of highlight. So what you see here is basically uh, you know, a block diagram of an SOC. It has three chiplets inside it, two compute plus an accelerator expansion. Um, you know, again, the, the AMBA CHI is providing that, that on-chip interconnect, that CHI green interconnect that you see there. It's connecting the CPUs to the memory system. You know, it's oper you know, you're running your operating system on those CPUs. And then last but not least, on, on the far side, you see the accelerator attach. And, and again, it's using the same FI technology, the same base interconnect pro uh, protocol. So you could have different vendor IP uh, from an interconnect perspective, plug and play um, with, with that type of uh, standardization. Context switch really quickly to, to the next step is um, how do we build these things? Uh, this was one of our announcements this week. Uh, you know, ARM builds IP and, and, and works with the ASIC partnership to, to build these pieces of silicon. And, and we announced a new program this week called ARM Total Design. Uh, this is a group of ASIC vendors, design service companies, uh, software, and, and, and foundry 
that are going to go off and, and help build this ecosystem, build it faster. So now that we have the standardizations in place, we have uh, blueprints on how to build these chiplets coming together, the next step is, is how do we get these built? And, and we're really excited about the opportunity to, to bring our partnership together uh, to provide options uh, to, to, our, to our end users and customers. So hopefully that, that gives you a quick tour of, of what we're focused on first. You know, again, we're, we're focused on industry standards, leveraging those industry standards to provide that interoperability. Uh, we're focused on that architecture specifically for trying to extend that on-chip bus to multi-chip. Uh, and last, last but not least, we're, we're looking to, to bring together our partnership to, to be able to build these customized, specialized compute platforms. Thank you. Thank you. Two minutes. Ah. Are you guys planning on uh, releasing uh, uh, licensable IP for your protocol engine for the AMBA, um, like a sandbox so that? Yes, yeah, good question. We'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that another time. You know, this is about standards, but certainly we have our interconnect IP uh, that will line up with, with, that, with, this, with this technology to enable it. Yep, we'll have it. 